we are going to sew our little tiny flying geese and the snowball blocks and similar to our setups for other blocks we are going to sew with a scant quarter inch on our little flying geese and on the snowball blocks we are going to sew on the line that we drew or just to the right of the line so that will allow for a little bit of forgiveness for when you press this corner over to the side, it will be more accurate to size than if you just sew right on top of the line because that absorbs or takes up space. So we are going to um, sew with a scant quarter inch. If you don't know where a scant quarter inch is on your machine, there's some really great tools available. One of my favorites is by Sew Very Smooth. It helps you find the scant quarter inch on your machine pretty accurately and then you can put a little piece of tape, washi tape, or some other tape on your plate. For me, I know where it is. I can visualize it and a lot of people can do that. If you are just figuring out where that scant quarter inch is for you, then having a tool that can help will give you more accuracy. Uh, in addition, I am sewing with a two stitch length, 1.8 to a two for piecing uh, both of these and the main block I am going to sew with the Swastrophine number 2674 that was a part of the monthly thread set <clears throat> that was a part of the monthly thread set and we're going to start with these little flying geese here so I'll set everything else to the side um, what you can't see is down here so follow if you follow my finger right down here I have a little pile and um, uh, so I can chain piece pretty fast and easily. Now most of the time when somebody is working on flying geese they'll put the piece um, on their machine with the sky piece up and start sewing up here at the top of what would be the perpendicular corner and come down to this um, this 45 degree corner. What I'm going to challenge you to do is flip it over and sew it with that corner up and down to the perpendicular. This will give you a lot more control and your point won't get stuck or sucked down into your needle plate, especially if you are sewing with a zigzag plate. I mentioned it in a previous video that if you can to get a single needle hole plate like this one is, uh, this machine only does a straight stitch so it doesn't have a zigzag plate. But if you can get one, it really does help a lot. So I'm going to line up and just start sewing right at the edge of my piece. If you like to, you can put your needle down to start. And I'm going to come down and just sew right off of the edge here. Remember, especially on the flying geese, it's really important to do a scant quarter inch because we cut these with the Fonz and Porter ruler and sewing with a scant quarter inch helps us to um, make sure that they're accurate and not too small. So we'll go ahead and start sewing um, all the way down to the bottom. And we'll just continue doing that with all four pieces. Okay, so I have all four of those done, and now I'm going to chain piece each of the snow first snowball corners, and I'm going to point out real quick what I mean by sewing just to the right. So here's my line. I'm lining up my needle, if you can see it, just to the right of the line. So that will just help my corners to be um, to press over more accurately. So I'll just piece through each of these. And while I'm piecing, I am trying to keep the, the ones that are the same 
made from uh, color number one and color number two together. The first side of those snowballs are done. I'm going to go ahead and clip off. Here I'm going to clip off the fine geese because we have to press those before we can put the other side on. And then I'm going to clip apart uh, the snowball corners and work on the other side. Okay, so these are all ready to sew the second side. I'm going to leave that one on just as kind of my anchor or leader, and then I'll trim that one off or clip it off. Okay, so it's ready to clip off. I'll come back here. There we go. And I am trying to keep all of those the same still and keep them in order. If they end up out of order, just do your very best to, to sort them out once you're done. All right, everything is sewn, at least in the first step. I'm going to go ahead and take these over to my cutting mat and pressing board, and we're going to trim these corners and press our little flying geese, um, press the sky out so we can attach the next sky, and we will have all of these units ready to piece into our fire flower block. Now that everything here is sewn, let's go ahead and press it and then we'll trim up our snowball box. So just like in the other videos, I know I keep saying that, but it is repetitive and that's one of the things I think is really great about this block of the month is we will repeat basic skills and build on them with new skills as well as extending the skills like with the snowball blocks. Last month we just did one corner, this month we're doing two corners plus matching seams at those corners. So it's a, it's a really is a great way to build your skills. We're going to set those seams, see how nice and flat they become. This one, if you can see, it's kind of, um, so let's look at that. That is a good thing to look at. See how it's not really flat, it's, it's warpy. Uh, that's just from piecing. And But giving it a nice set, setting that seam makes it nice and flat, and then when we press that over, it will be much more accurate as well as not ripply there. So we'll press those over to the side now. Just press that sky up toward the corner. We'll do that for all of them. And remember, because these little guys are so cute and little and sweet, we do need to make sure we are extra careful with using a scant quarter inch. We don't have much forgiveness the smaller the pieces um, get. So be sure to use that scant quarter inch on those. All right, now our snowball blocks, we're just going to set the seams on those. Again, it helps because of the piecing that was done on the bias there. So we'll just set those and then put that to the side. Keeping them oriented the same just makes when I go to trim them a little bit quicker. And keeping my piles together that go together. So we'll set those seams. And then we'll go to trim these guys up. All right, now they're all ready to go. So we'll switch over to trimming and then we'll be ready to 
finished sewing these. I'm going to um, prep these for you. Let's go ahead and do that first. I'll glue baste the other side of the sky onto our little flying geese. Then I'm going to sew them and press them. And then when you see these little guys again, they'll be ready to trim. And I will show you um, how I'm using that little block lock ruler to trim them. I will also show you trimming them using a regular ruler. So I'll go ahead and glue baste these on. So these are um, pretty easy to do kind of assembly line style. So here's another little trick for these. So I'm right handed. So I'm going to do the gluing on the right hand of all the pieces here. If you're left handed, just flip them all around. I have my glue with the microfine tip and then draw that fine line right on the inside of your seam allowance. And you could do all four of these at once if you'd like. You could do this for other glue basting too. I, I sometimes call it um, chain glue basting. So it's just another option. And then right sides together. So since these are hand dies on a solid, I, I'm not really keeping track of what's right and left. Um, I'm sorry, what's right and wrong. But um, you'll make sure yours are right sides together. And I'm just aligning the edge here and making sure it all lines up just just nicely. So don't mind the weird trimming on these. I lost my little triangles. I filmed these this segment separate from the other one and somewhere in the midst of those couple of days I lost my triangle so I just cut these from some scrap that I had and which um, made the corners look funky so don't worry about it. It's nothing. It's there. Yours will look like this one. Uh, don't worry about. Don't worry about those too much. Um, I cut them from some triangles, quarter square triangle pieces that I had made. So those are all glue basted. Let's make sure they're all matching up. This one's a little off for some reason. It's more important to get the edge here matched up. That will go into the seam allowance than than this edge. I'm sorry, that's on the straight grain. So we'll heat set those, and then they are all ready to sew. Now we'll move on over and um, trim up our snowball blocks. The snowball blocks will have their seam allowances trimmed at the quarter inch. Because they're already sewn, you can trim them a little shorter if you want to and they don't have to be super extremely quarter inch accurate because they're already sewn. So to trim these guys up, um, one little trick I like to do is line up two of them, similar to the little trick I showed you for um, piecing or for drawing a line, and just kind of put that seam right on the quarter inch and then you can cut two at a time. So we'll put that seam, line up those seams at the quarter inch, just kind of scooch those little guys over if you need to, and then you can trim two at a time. And then flip them over and do the same thing. And again, they don't have to be extremely super duper accurate because we've already sewn them. And that's ready to press. Same thing here, just kind of scooch them under your ruler to put them where you want them. Flip them around. And those are ready to press. Having those little tricks can really speed up this preparation part because Ah, you know how preparation can be. Sometimes it takes longer to prepare things than it does just to sew it up. And this part is um, part of that. Alright, last two. And then we will press them and they'll be ready to piece into the block.
And look at all these cute little tiny pieces. If you are a tiny piecer, some, sometimes that song Tiny Dancer runs through my head when I think of Tiny Piecer. <laughs> tiny, these little tiny pieces, if you keep these kind of things, they're wonderful for, for tiny little, teeny tiny half square triangles. If not, um, go ahead and just put them in your, in your um, scrap bin. And these are all ready to press, and then uh, we'll get to piecing our fire flower block together. So these are all ready to, to press to the side. Uh, previously, I showed you setting these things, then trimming them. You can certainly um, trim them, then set them. It really doesn't matter which order that part is done in. Since I was working on the flying geese as well, I just decided to press all of those things at once, but that's completely up to you. It really doesn't matter what order that's done in, so long as you set the seams before pressing your corners out. So this is kind of, um, so for this part just press them right out to the corners. If you need to use a little starch to press them you can. And hopefully they're pretty accurate. After pressing all these snowball blocks, uh, I do recommend going uh, through each of them and just truing them up to these two corners it, almost exactly like we did the snowball blocks last time and trimming any excess off of these corners and making sure that they are the size they are supposed to be. Okay, the starch just helps make it nice and flat. But we don't want distortion. We don't want to cause everything to go um, crooked and wonky. We just want to want it to be flattened. So go ahead and keep pressing all your corners out. And starch as needed. And if you are a um, presser who kind of goes back and forth here and there. Do try and press these flat because the seams are short. Uh, we don't want them getting squiggly on us. All right, last one. And then I'm just going to uh, run through trimming quick for you. So again, it's, it's repetitive. You'll be doing the same thing over and over. And I'm going to give these just a quick light spraying of starch. Okay, just quick. Doesn't need much. We just want. So to trim these up, you'll need a rectangular, a rectangular or a square ruler. And when you are measuring these, we're going to use these two corners here as our um, reference point for truing them up. And these will be three and a half inches squared. So I want this corner here to be right at three and a half inches and this one here at three and a half inches because this was our square um, trued up before we started piecing. And if there are any excess or um, if there's any excess out here or here then we'll trim that off. What I want to point out here, uh, I want to make sure everybody notices, it's one of the kind of the drawbacks to snowball blocks is um, that these corners can cause some distortion, uh, just kind of by the nature of them being sewn on the bias and uh, just, just how they work sometimes. So the reason for chewing it up here and here is to just keep this the squared up square as square as possible if I hope that makes some sense so um, if I just go right along the white here and ignore the orange or the yellowy orange this becomes off up here see how how it's off up here so once I adjust this corner and this corner and I get more trued up you can see that I'm going to trim off a little bit here, maybe it's a teeny bit up there, and then I'll have a nice true corner to work on that side. Okay, so now I have a nice trued up corner over here that I can work with. 
So line up everything there on this side at three and a half inches. And it should work out real nice. And then trim off anything extra. So I'll do that for all of the blocks just to make sure that they're all at three and a half inches. It really does make a big difference. Uh, before I forget, I want to point out one more thing. Since we are trying to match these corners, so what will happen is these will come together and seem like this. Because we do want to match these two corners, when you are truing them up, um, take note that the seam for this guy here um, runs diagonally right through the one and a half inch mark. So when you're truing that up, if it is really short, um, try and true it up so that it lands closer to the one and a half inch. If it's too big, kind of pull it back and true it up so that is at that one and a half inch mark there. Now down here, because this is a half inch, going from a half inch measurement, it's going to land at the two. It's going to land at the two over, so one, two, and then two down. So it's not really two inches, of course. It's a one and a half inch from that corner there. So just keep that in mind as you are truing up and trimming these guys. So now that we have these all trim, trimmed and trued and ready to go, uh, we'll finish up those flying geese. Well, the sweet little geese are ready for pressing, so I'll go ahead and set that seam on all four, pull, um, bring that sky over to set the seam. And then we'll true these up with the block lock ruler and I'll show you how to do it with the regular ruler as well. If you feel like they need um, a little extra um, starching, you can do that. I want that sky to be nice and flat for, for truing it up. There we go. Oh, that's much better. So these are all ready to, to trim up. So I've got this little cute teeny tiny little flying geese block lock ruler. And it is really the simplest, fastest, easiest, most accurate way to trim up these little flying geese. Take your the little ruler if you have that and your flying geese. Unfortunately, you can't use the larger flying geese rulers to trim smaller ones. Uh, it, it just doesn't work out as well um, at all. But these, having it the right size really helps a lot. So the little channel, uh, if you can see that in there, so the little channel locks right into our seams that we press to the side, hold it in place, and go ahead and trim the top side and top. That's my preference. And then kind of hold onto it, spin it around and make sure it's locked back in place. You can hold on to those dog ears. They're a good little tool if you need to make sure it's locked in place. And then do the other two sides. And then it's ready to go. It's so adorable. For if you didn't get the ruler to trim it up, you'll need a rectangular ruler that has the 45 degree angle coming out of the corner. You can see that there, 45 degree angle coming out of the corner. That's really important. So you'll align your ruler on top of your flying geese with a couple of measurements in mind. That 45 degree angle coming out of the corner is going to align right on top of the seam on that corresponding side. The other thing to um, keep in mind is that intersecting point right here needs to be at one and a quarter. So align that. It's really easy to do this. It's really easy to do that. Aligning that measurement there will help make sure that it's centered and accurate. So we're going to make sure that that's aligned and then that 
the 45 degree line is right on top of our seam. And then just for good measure, go take your eyeballs and walk them around and make sure that there's no shortages, um, that it's not on the inside of one and a half or on the, the, the selvage isn't on the inside of the two and a half. That just helps you know that you've got some, some fabric that is trimmable and that your block will be nice and accurate. And then trim the one side and then the top and then you'll flip it around and now you have a trued up corner that can go at the one and a half down and two and a half across point and make sure they all line up and last but not least do make sure that that one and a half inch point is lined up with the intersection there and then true up your other two and then you are all set so those um, that's how you true that up using your ruler all of my flying geese are ready to piece into the fire flower block so we'll get all of the units put into rows and get it all sewn up.